to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Bryan Board of Public Affairs for November 19th, 2019. First on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the November 5th, 2019 meeting. Board members, you've been supplied with a copy of the minutes. If there are any additions or corrections? Seeing that, Jim, I move we accept. Second. Dick? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Karen? Yes. Eric? Yes. Next is a hearing of public concerns. Seeing none, uh, clerk treasurer's report. The board's been presented with the clerk treasurer's report for the month ending October 31st, 2019. I make a motion that we accept the clerk treasurer's report. Second. Karen? Yes. Eric? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Dick? Yes. Next is a request to adopt a water rate plan. Go on. Um, at the November 5th BPA meeting, I provided an update to the 2018 water revenue um, rate plan and um, as you recall in the fall of 2018 the board adopted one year of a four-year plan um, and last meeting we went through uh, the results and it is BMU's recommendation that the board consider um, going ahead and passing the remaining three years of the plan so that we can continue with our capital improvements with the water main projects and, and items that we have at the water treatment plant. I see I've screwed up already. I, it's a resolution. Lori, would you read that in memory, please? I'm sorry. Yeah. Resolution number 39, 2019, revising Bryan Water Department Rate Addendum Exhibit A Water Rate Schedules. Thank you. I'm sorry, Tom. That's okay. Any discussion? Any questions for the young lady? You know, but this is something that we planned, and we do need the water infrastructure. So I don't see a reason why we shouldn't go ahead. I'd like to clarify, just for everybody listening, um, the way it was worded in our packets, that it was a $2 increase, but that's over a three-year period. $2 per month on the residential. Correct. It wasn't going to be starting two bucks, two bucks and two bucks. It was just going to be two dollars over the course, correct? Well, the service rate for residential, yeah, has about a dollar twenty-five off the top of my head, about a dollar twenty-five per month. Mm -hmm. uh, dollar, yeah, the service charge would be increased by a dollar twenty-five, and then they'll pay that rate per month, and then the next year has an increase of roughly a dollar twenty-five. Okay. So but on average it would it would impact um a dollar ninety-five to a dollar ninety-nine or two dollars per month. Okay. And I think you brought up at the last meeting that we'd be able to revisit this um, yes. yearly. So yes. Yeah. See how it goes. Okay. Well, the water sales were less than we projected was part of the reason for this year and a couple of uh, Coupled with being cooler and wetter weather, so in a year from now, if things turn around the other way, then maybe we won't have to pass that on. So yeah. it, is, it is what it is right now. So. Yeah. Do you happen to know off the top of your head um, how many miles of water line we still plan to install over? Yeah, the capital improvement plan calls for it at the minimum of about three quarters of a mile per year in order to continue with the 100 year service life. Um, and overall, uh, I think BMU owns 62 miles but maintains close to 70. So. We're ahead of the what we uh, planned on installing, I think. Aaron, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, the last several, uh, last couple years we've exceeded that goal. Mm -hmm. um, I think last year we put in around 
Just over 4,000 feet? Yeah, well, I think it was almost over a mile. So. A lot of it is getting rid of that old four inch line mm -hmm. too, so that that helps out insurance rates, fire protection, everything like that. So, not forget that's part of the infrastructure. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. I'll accept the motion. Approved. So moved. Second. Dick? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Karen? Yes. Resolution number 40, 2019, authorizing the Director of Utilities to re-advertise for bids for construction of the Industrial Drive substation project. Um, I am here to talk about the Industrial Drive substation and ask for permission to re-advertise for the construction of uh, the substation. Uh, as you re can recall, uh, earlier this year we went out to bid for the equipment. The equipment was awarded and ultimately ordered. Um, and then we also went out to bid for um, the construction of the project. In September, the BPA had to reject the bids because they came in above the 10% of the engineer's estimate. So the BMU team has been working with GPD um, group, who is the engineers that we have hired to assist us with this process. And we now feel that we have a solid engineer's estimated construction cost of $1,618,700, uh, which also includes a 10% contingency. Um, with the equipment being on order, uh, we need to get the, prop, the construction piece of it re-advertised. At this point, if you approve this tonight, um, it would be legally ad advertised on December 5th and the 12th um, and hopefully get us back on track. I believe right now the substation is anticipated to be in service um, in September or October of 2020. I know that we re had rejected those bids, and I personally think it was a timing thing with the, you know what I mean? All these people were, you know, they had a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was a part of it. The other part was they just missed the number. I mean, yeah. So a little combination of both, I believe. And since it's been tweaked, and yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a good time to start to advertise. We need to get going because we're going to have this equipment coming. Right. And the transformers yeah. and no place to put it. I guess that's what I was going to ask. Is the delay going to cause us any problems? I still think we're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, as long as we get this moving and get it bid out as soon as possible and uh, get it out there, you know, uh, early, and hopefully we can get some bids back and, and uh, get some reasonable bids this time. So. Okay. Just for the people listening, can you explain? You, you know, we had an engineer's estimate of nine hundred twelve thousand. Now it's one point six million. Can you just explain why there's such a big difference in the engineer's estimates between those two dates? Well, I believe it's probably um, working with the team and getting through it. There's a couple of different reasons. Um, we received two bids that were over the 10% threshold. Um, so in evaluating that, we took a step back and we had GPD look at if there was anything in the contract that would cause a pinch point or an exception to... to um, produce those high numbers. Um, from what I understand, there were a couple technical issues that with the timing of them submitting a bid, um, they chose to leave out with the um, oil containment. Um, there were some questions about the driveway approach and um, also they, if you recall, the equipment, they were high. Those bids came in under. And sometimes they said that uh, 
when when people bid a contract, it'll be high on the materials, lower on the labor, or vice versa. So, did I explain it well enough, Nate? I think I think that's right. And just to add to that, I mean, we have these materials coming. We didn't know exactly what size this building is. How big is this transformer? Those all play into it. Well, how much concrete do you need? What's the size of this pad? Uh, what's your feeder lengths? You know, uh, underground uh, cable is of course more expensive than overhead. So, what were the exact feeder lengths? We uh, been able to get that information back from some of the materials and uh, be able to tighten that stuff up. We we did the driveway approach, so that's done. We kind of adjusted some of the feeder lengths uh, uh, as far as the riser poles go, and uh, I guess a combination of those things along with the weather and the minimal contractors bidding on it. Uh, I mean, I think the bidders came in at uh, 1.5 roughly and, and 1.7. Uh, so that 1.6 that they're giving us now is real world numbers. Uh, sometimes it's just hard to, to put your finger on what that number is. And, and so, I mean, we got a pretty good balance of what it is now. But it was a combination of all those things, you know, whether what materials we needed, what sizes of things were, where they were located, uh, you know, just a combination of all those things. And, and honestly, they just missed it. That's, I mean, the bottom line is that. And for, for the majority of those reasons, I believe, is probably why. So I think the number that we have now is, is hopefully, you know, where it needs to be because we really can't afford another one of these. We need to get this, this rolling, you know, so when these transformers show up, we have a pad to set them on. We have a grounding grid. We have all this stuff, you know, ready to go. So. Uh, you know, these are the building itself, you know, and we, we want to be able to go out there and set it on, on a concrete pad instead of, you know, uh, in a field, I guess, <laughs> or mud, should I say. But, uh, so, you know, hopefully everything works smoothly this time, and I believe it will. I think everything's still going to, you know, fall into place, and I think we're going to be fine with it. But. Okay. Nate, I've got a question for you. Sure. It just probably doesn't pertain to the temporary road that you guys put in with the grindings. Right. Is that just a temporary thing for? No, it's permanent access road. Uh, it was done by a water crew who helped do it and uh, oh, helped, okay. helped uh, on the design portion of it. If you saw those poles, those are huge uh, steel poles. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're not going to be back there a bunch, but if it ever does, and you know, something oh, okay. means, means maintained, uh, you know, uh, if you think about being muddy and wet and trying to pull a line truck in there for an emergency situation, sure. you have an access road oh, okay. to maintain that 69 line. So it, uh, for customer service and a lot of other reasons, it's important to be able to get to those poles. When you're off the public road and right away, it's nice to have that access uh, for, a, a, you know, no matter what the weather, uh, the electric crew will be able to get back there and maintain that line. I'm, you know, so I'm speaking out of that. No, we need to have that road to build the line. Right. Yeah, and build that's it. what I mean. You have to build it in seasonal, you know, ground conditions or right. are, are because you're going to have a muddy mess on the other right. side. Right. And they can right. work out there all winter. We're going to have okay. distribution on that too. So yeah. uh, there will be a distribution line run up there. It's just, it's just transmission. You know, when you get transmission built, it pretty much is, is there. Yeah. The distribution line is underbuilt. You know, we have to work with pole, di different poles that give us the ability to do that. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have another question. Um, is this the bid that uh, came in and that where we looked at the prices of the transformers and found they varied quite a bit? And if so, you know, did we do some kind of adjustment on what uh, type of transformer we were interested in? I think we talked about you know high end, low end, and middle grade transformers. Right. I think if you remember, I mean, just because a transformer is less expensive, the overall cost of the transformer in the long run uh, could be more. So right. the engineers kind of calculated all that stuff. You, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for, you get a cheaper cost, but you're paying you know higher dollars on that as far as the efficiency of the transformer goes. Is my understanding. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are all. Uh, have been looked at and purchased and and uh, you know the, the the drawings were all looked at and sent back so all that stuff pretty much a, a done deal i think we went with niagara transformer okay. on the on that bid right there all right that was the last uh, material bid that we had that last piece of that materials puzzle that we had going okay and then is gpd the company that's going to put the bid out there and then review it and Give us um, some yeah, we're, we're working hand in hand with them. We kind of want our hand in it too, because uh, but we want to make sure that you know our bidding process fits 
uh, what, what they are. I mean, they're, well, sometimes if you look at their bid documents, not exactly what we would do. So we, we merge together our bid documents and our legal documents with their uh, legal specifications or their specifications, their engineering specifications. And they, they kind of help us with it, but uh, it's, it's a shared, we've kind of shared it. And so we're going to probably share it again this time too, just mm -hmm. to manage it. We want to be a part of it and, and uh, work it through. Work it, I mean, we have to work with Lori, we have to work with uh, legal advisors and get signatures, you know how that stuff goes. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of it in-house that we need to, to work on too, along with them. Thank you, Nate. Anybody else? I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Dick? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. Agendas and other resolutions. Your week numbers, please. Resolution number 41, 2019, authorizing change order number one and final for the 2019 street improvements for Bryan North Industrial Park connecting Beeman Street and Brunicardi Way construction project, including Beeman Street and Johnson Drive water main extensions. Speak a little bit to this, just uh, kind of refresh. Uh, last night, I think uh, council basically uh, passed their information as far as the contract change order goes, and so we are just following suit, and we're going to adjust uh, our cost. You know, we got the the grant money, and we got a, a heck of a deal on this whole project, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, you know, it's like. Uh, we got that water line up north and now we're having a chance to loop that back in so uh, we're getting pennies on the dollar through the grant money it was, it's great that that's happening and uh, so I mean we're going to be uh, what is it paying an additional what 26 99 45 for this change order and that is for our water portion of this project uh, and most of that is just balancing out anytime you do a project uh, you know, you have bid items and there are always a little plus and minuses here and there. Uh, the major one on this one was, uh, uh, I mean, we put the water line in first, then they came by and they, you know, put the curb and stuff in. And, and I had actually probably my fault. I put uh, one hydrant that was probably within a foot of the, the, the curb and they had a little issue with putting the under drain in. So we had to change the style and went to a type two hydrant and that bumped it away from the curb so they were able to finish it but i mean it, that's all that we had it, it was a pretty good uh, pretty good project and a pretty cheap price you know to pay for what we achieved there with that 12 inch water line so uh, i recommend that uh, we accept this uh, change order and we can probably close out our end of the of the project i think al's got all i think the lights are in now al are pretty close to yeah, we're in the process just finishing up the lighting so as soon as that's the rest of those lighting in i think it just will be done as far as our portion goes and it turned out great as far as i'm concerned the whole road and the access up there is going to be nice for dabble and also getting trucks in and out of there the whole thing's a, a win for the city and the utility yeah and if i'm not mistaken brian whelan kind of worked with you on that um, well, we, we, we always work together. So oh, I mean, it's, it's something like, uh, so I'll do the water line portion of it. I try to merge it in with, with, you know, Andy's and plans and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll do the design of the, the water line and he does the design of the road curbs and, and sewers. And then we merge our documents together. Then I send our portion off to the Ohio EPA because our stuff has to be approved, uh, for the water, you know, any water has to be approved by the Ohio EPA. So send that off and get it done. And then we, we jump back and forth in inspection. Like Pat would be out there for, for uh, the roadway and, and the sewers and stuff. And then we put our crews out there to, to because we want good records of as built and stuff like that. What's in there. When, when they throw it in a field, it's nice to be able to GPS it and know exactly where things are. So, so we share responsibilities and work together through the whole process. And um, 
looks like, you know, hopefully we'll be able to continue on this next year and finish that loop out and go down to Page Street. As a matter of fact, I think Brian's looking at my plans right now for the EPA approval and get those stamped and get those moving and we can then finish that water line to Page Street and tie into that 12 that goes underneath the railroad tracks and then we'll have our loop in there, mm -hmm. which is way, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I expect this may take years and it's kind of nice to see this coming to fruition and, and moving by so quickly. So that helps we did well. Out. Sounds like we did well in funding. Yeah. Oh, it's mm -hmm. unbeatable. I wish we could get this especially for, <laughs> for about everything. Yeah, especially with the grants. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, you can't beat it. Yeah. And some of that was um, a thank you to Davlin as well. They yeah. had the opportunity to get some training funds and they waived that so that the city and utility could get larger funds for the road. So yeah. it was a mutual agreement that everyone yeah. made together. So it was a lot of, I, I call that the best public-private partnership yep. that we've seen yeah. in a long time. Yeah, county, city, yes. utilities, everybody worked hand in hand on this thing, you know, to, to help a small business uh, create new jobs. And it just, you know, yep. like I said, it worked out great mm -hmm. for, for everybody involved. So, okay. perfect. Yeah. So yep. That's, was, that's, to uh, that's yeah. exactly yeah. right. And I heard yesterday Mayor Johnson got a picture in front of his road sign that's been <laughs> stuck. Good. 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 Good for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's pretty proud of that. Yes. Yeah, he, is. he should. And he should. He should. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that this additional uh, difference is twenty six hundred and ninety nine dollars, and not twenty six thousand right. dollars. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, the additional. Yes. Heard twenty six and thinking, whoa. Correct. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of numbers there to look at, but you're absolutely right. That's correct. This will come back before council if you approve it at the next council meeting, so that the money can be appropriated, then we can pay off pay off the final piece of the project. And then hopefully we can get the funds back, um, the grant funds in before the end of the year. Yeah. So we have advances out there too from both the city and water um, to fund this project waiting for that advance to come through. So we'd like to get that cleaned up for the end of the year. Where did that one inch customer domestic line go? That's for Dablin. Uh, the eight inch fire line was for Dablin and then yeah. the one inch uh, domestic service oh. line water is for Dablin. That was the only, believe it or not, only uh, water on there. Yeah, I was trying to think of where that would have went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Any okay, more questions? Mm -hmm. okay. motion. I'd like to make a motion that we <coughs> authorize change order one for the water line project. Second. Karen? Yes. Dick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Derek? Yes. Next is a request to hire a part-time videographer. Good evening. We have another part-time videographer that we would like to hire. Uh, this will take the number up to 10. This will not change the uh, budget at all. However, it does provide um, more employees for air to schedule from. We have some employees that prefer this to work certain events over the others, and so we try to rotate those in and out as they graduate and move on to college as well. So at this time, we are presenting you with Parker Rosebrook to hire. Um, he is currently a student at Bryan Schools, and he is also involved in their videography program there at the school. And so we do try to partner with them when we can. So this is a great opportunity for Parker to get some more experience and for us to have another employee. Questions? Comments? I think Derek, Derek did ask you about all these part-timers mm -hmm. that we hire. We never see them leave. Right. I mean, can you explain that so that people don't think that we're hiring 500 of them? Right. When we have a part-time temporary employee, um, we do bring all the hires here uh, for you guys um, to give us permission to hire them. However, when they um, resign and move on, whether that's to go to college or just another opportunity, we don't bring the part-time resignations back in front of you. Because yeah. so, we have yeah. a goal that we like to keep. Uh, yeah, we try to keep it between 9 and 11 Correct. employees, and so this is at 10. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we hire Mr. Rosebrook as a temporary part-time paper. Okay. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dick? Yes. Derek? Yes.
Next request to reclassify an electric department employee. Yeah, I'd like to request to reclassify Witt Longcore as a uh, line worker for. Uh, Witt's been with the department for since 2012. Um, you know, what can I say about Witt? He's got, he's, you know, prompt, he's, he's dependable, he's a really nice guy. Um, you know, he's got, he displays a positive attitude all the time. He's, he's stepped up and um, he's became our, our la uh, large power uh, meter reading backup for Jay when he can't do it. So he's got a technical side to him that, that you know, we, we take, we benefit from. Uh, you know, Witt's, uh, you know, well liked by his peers and, uh, you know, the manager, Adam and I both really like Witt. Um, and uh, he's, you know, deserves to be moved up, so we'd like to uh, request that. He participated in the Lyman's Rodeo, too. Didn't yes, you? yep. N numerous years. He's a good Lyman. I'll make a motion we approve. I just got one quick question. Oh, what, sorry. What's the difference between a line worker three and a line worker four? It's a step in pay. Okay, it's not any like additional certifications or anything like that. No, okay. he's met Just all curious. he's met all his uh, classes and certifications, okay. climbing schools. He's he's been he's, 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 he's got approved yeah. for all that. Oh, yeah. anybody else? Okay, I'll make a motion. We approve. I'll second. Tim. Yes. Dick. Yes. Tom. Yes. Karen. Yes. Derek. Yes. Thank you. is to affect <coughs> semi-monthly disbursements. Can I have a motion to pay the bills, please? Yes, I'll make the motion. So, second. Karen? Yes. Dick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Karen? Yes. Comments from BP and staff? Mm -hmm. Here. Nothing to it? Nothing? You know I got something. <laughs> no, I'd just like to say that uh, only last night at, at city council uh, meeting um, had a discussion about the the uh, after before the second reading and after and I thought it was fantastic that it was a great discussion. I mean, it was fantastic to me and uh, I think it gave everybody some things to think about. Mm -hmm. And it, it kept the discussion going. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was pretty happy. Again, I would encourage everyone uh, to contact your, your council members because I think they want to know. For or against, they want your input. And I think it's very important that you give it to them to help guide the decision. But uh, that's about all I can say. Just please contact your council. That, that's all I have. Karen? I think <coughs> Mr. Square. I'll just reiterate what, what Dick said, that, that, that the council wants to talk to people. And they, they've had various people come up for it, but I haven't, or excuse me, against it. But uh, I haven't seen anybody come forward to say that's a good thing. So. If there's people out there that want to come up and talk to council, I know that they want to hear from them, and, and that's mm -hmm. I, that's good. So yeah. thank you, John, for for uh, allowing those people to talk, and, and hopefully more people speak up. So thank you. Really? Okay. Really? Laurie? No, sir. <coughs> Mr. Caperton? Jackie? John? Annette? Thank you. Al, we got some. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I'd like to uh, just mention uh, we've got Osmos in town doing some poll testing. <clears throat> um, they're working in the area of Center Street and Avenue A. Um, they do have um, the BMU logo magnetic on their on their trucks, but they are dressed as utility workers. They do have a letter 
stating what what they're doing, but they are testing our distribution pools in town. Just want to let everybody know that's watching. You know, just in case they're wondering, that's what they're doing. They will be excavating around the bottom of the pole and drilling a hole in the pole and, and measuring the decay in the in the in the pole at the base of the of the crown. So, um, you know, we'll be doing a little bit of excavation in the backyards just around the poles that we have. And uh, we do have another crew out on the Marcus Corridor is testing and treating that also, North and Nay. Uh, they're roughly just got into Defiance County. Um, they're getting about 25 poles a day. We have about 170 poles to do. So um, there we go. They started uh, up at Lawrence Sub and working south. So if anybody's curious what, what they're doing out there, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And the uh, Lion Crew's working on Christmas lights this week. and next to try to get that uh, finished up. So question for you. What, what poles do you decide that need testing? Is it based on age or? Um, no, actually we've in the past, I don't know, it's probably been nine, ten years now, we've done a kind of a quadrant type thing. We started in the north northeast quadrant mm -hmm. and we do the southeast, northwest, south, southwest. We, we do that. The southwest is so big that it's taken us a couple years to get it done. But we usually budget around ten thousand dollars a year in testing. This year we, we did it again, so we're we're around you know in the southwest quarter, and we're about six hundred and sixty poles roughly what we'll test. Uh, we kind of separate the um, transmission poles. We've got like two hundred and fifty sixty nine kb poles on our loop. And we will test that separate from the distribution just because it's kind of a high priority poll. We may do that, you know, every four or five years to try to get them tested. Marcus Corridor 2, 69 poll, that's a lifeline to Brian. So we kind of, you know, want to keep that under our, our you know, wraps and, and keep make sure that we don't have any, any poles going bad out there. And, uh, and they're doing a, a treatment also. They're excavating down about 24 inches they're wrapping the butt and pasting it with a it's like a protective layer around that and treating for uh, carpenter ants also so something they'll they'll do a visual inspection you know and, and treat that pole to 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 long the life of it so it's a good investment that we've that you all had approved uh this year to have done so you know, we got to keep that line in good operation along with the tree trimming. Mm -hmm. And we do have a line cleared all the way from Bryan to Nay. And we'll continue that from Nay South beginning of next year. So if, if the budget's approved. And we are, are we responsible for the 138 down the corridor? Yes, we, yeah, okay. we own that line from Bryan to Lockwood Road. That's right. 170 poles. Yeah. All Western Red Cedar, you know. Class zero, mm -hmm. big post, big, big post. Big yeah. post. How, just, this is off the chart probably, but how do you test the pull at Circle K intersection? <laughs> That's a good question. Bone we arrow. asked the guy from Osmos that and he didn't have an answer for us. He said, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but you know, you don't test that pool like you do other poles because right. it's a laminate. He didn't have an answer for us on that. That's a good question, but I, I don't have an answer for you, okay. to be honest with you. I'm sure it's you will. It's kind of a different Some animal. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we'll need it tested in my lifetime. No. <laughs> no. I remember no. it had a long lifespan right. because of its lamb. It's better for as much as it costs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Vicki. Oh, you have anything? No. Okay. Nate. Uh, no. Don. Max. No, okay. <laughs> I'd just like to say sat Saturday afternoon around 4.30, quarter of 5, um, our power went out. I remember it was that because it was right before halftime in the Ohio State Red. <laughs> 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 and what it always seems like a long time, but it, it amazed me uh, when I went back around the house after the lights came back on. It was only like 15 or 17. I didn't miss that much of the game. It wasn't that much of a game anyway. Uh, but I, I was I was surprised that they could they could bring a guy in. He could get the vehicle he needed. He could he could isolate the problem. 
he could either fix it or bypass it so he could get the power back on. And I think they really did a great job. They did. I mean, things like that happen. You can't, you can't get around that. Things fail from time to time. But if you can get people back on that quick, I don't think we'll ever have a problem. They did a heck of a job. And with that, uh, we'll have an executive session to discuss the discipline and to discuss the dismissal of a public employee. Uh, before we go into executive session, we will take a brief recess. Uh, I would ask, besides the board members, if Mayor, if you could stay, Lori, if you could stay, uh, Jackie, please, and Dawn, if you would stay also. Thank you.